Hey everyone, this is Nicole from KenHub and in this tutorial, we'll be looking at the surface anatomy landmarks of the head and neck. Thankfully, we don't see people walking around the streets looking like this. For clinicians, this means that we have to rely on the surface landmarks created by underlying structures in order to find our way around the body. Surface anatomy landmarks are anatomical features that can be seen or identified with the naked eye without dissection. Knowledge of these landmarks is essential for carrying out a range of tests and for finding the right spot to operate on during surgical procedures. Not to mention, they're great to be aware of if you're an artist. In this tutorial, we're going to be focusing specifically on the surface anatomy landmarks of the head and the neck. If you'd like to learn about these surface anatomy landmarks elsewhere in the body, be sure to check out our other tutorials which look in more detail at these. But for now, let's dive right in to look at the surface anatomy landmarks of the head. So the most notable set of landmarks we can see on the head are the facial features, that is, the eyes, the ears, the nose, and the lips. The structure and appearance of the face is heavily influenced by the shape of the skull underneath, so we'll be looking simultaneously at the landmarks as they appear on the underlying skull using this image. No two faces are the same because no two skulls are the same. The nose gets a lot of its shape and structure from the nasal cartilages, which we can see here if we look beneath the surface. These derive a lot of their shape, in turn, from the nasal bones, which form the bridge of the nose. If we take a look at the bones themselves, we can see that these only form a small part of the shape of the nose. Have a go at feeling this area on your own face. See if you can trace the nasal bones to their junction with the nasal cartilages. The nasal bones do a lot to influence the appearance of a person, especially only taking up a relatively small portion of the nose itself. Nasal bones come in all shapes and sizes, as we can see in the people around us. The complete outline of the orbital margin can also easily be traced on either side of the nasal bones. In particular are the supraciliary arches, which can be clinically useful for us as they indicate the position of the frontal sinuses. These two arched elevations are prominent medially and can help us find the supraorbital notch or foramen, which is where the supraorbital nerve passes through. The next rather obvious landmark we have on the head is the outer portion of the two ears, otherwise known as the auricle. These also come in all manner of shapes and sizes, but generally have anatomy in common. For example, over here is the entrance to the middle and inner ear, known as the external acoustic meatus. We can also see the outermost fold, the helix, and this inner fold, the antihelix. We also have a slightly smaller tragus and antitragus. And of course over here is the lobule or the earlobe. The next set of landmarks we can see highlighted here, and making our model look like he's sporting a bit of war paint, are known as the zygomatic arches, and give rise to the shape and structure of the cheeks. The zygomatic arch is actually formed by two bones, the zygomatic process of the temporal bone, and the temporal process of the zygomatic bone. The zygomatic arches have a big influence on the appearance of the face, and can be easily palpated. This video is not over yet. Continue watching now the full video at KenHub.com. We have lots more videos like this one available to our premium members on our website, not to mention all the fun quizzes, related articles, and atlas sections. So click on the button in the middle to watch the full-length video and master anatomy.